one smile. Good evening. Um, this is the Empress of Love, Miss Sheila, coming to you with the another Saturday night poet's table of verse. Um, I am a virgin to this. This is my first time uh, reading my poetry, my words, my, I call them my pennies for anybody that knows me, um, out aloud. So um, something that I've been discussing, getting into, so I get the chance here. Um, I'm originally from Chicago. I moved to Minnesota 19 years ago, and I just moved from Minnesota down to Orlando, Florida about five months ago. So I'm now currently a Floridian. And um, I have some pieces that I'm going to read. And if anyone comes in uh, that wants to ask questions in regards to my writing, um, feel free to do so. I started writing um, a little bit over three decades ago as an escape for feelings, if you will. I was dealing with some emotional things and I found it to be therapeutic to express myself um, on paper with pen and um, release that was within me um, instead, as opposed to bottling it up. That's what I did before I started writing. Um, I write in a variety of styles, whatever I'm feeling at that moment. I do a lot of response um, to things that maybe I'm dealing with or maybe even other people are dealing with. I have a piece that I, if I get around to doing that I had written for this young lady who was going through some turmoil. And um, I'm, I think I'll get a chance to share that with you. So I write a different variety of styles, um, depending on how I feel and how the flow is coming. I write mostly from experience. Sometimes I throw a little bit of, um, of um, creativity as far as, well, it, it's all creative, but sometimes I throw in a little bit of, I'm trying to think of that word, um, fiction, if you will. So sometimes um, I may be a little fictionist with my words, and I, I like to play with them. Um, hi, Ms. Loney. It's good to see you, sweetheart. <laughs> um, I like to play with words. So um, I'm going to start off with this piece, and this is actually a, um, a piece that, that I experienced, and, and I was very emotional when I wrote it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I was going through some things with an incident, an incident with my youngest daughter. I'm very overprotective of my people and especially my children. So um, as I read, you may be able to feel the passion behind my words, and I'm hoping that I can keep this up. Maybe I shouldn't have started with this one, but this one is first. It's called Last Night I Met an Angel, and it's um, a piece that I had actually did um, – in the lion's den, the, the lyrical den, the lyrical den, a group that I'm in, and um, we got, sometimes we get little topics to pin off of. So it was about an angel, and this is the way that I went with that. And I like doing that. I like getting little topics to do a spin off and, and give my spill on that. It's fun to me. Um, last night I wrote a name, last night I wrote an angel. Last night I met an angel. This was a pen a piece I penned back in April of 2013. Last night I met an angel. As I look back over what happened and I tried to fill that space, I realized I looked three shades of darkness right in the face. The first one, a man who would not only hit a female, but one carrying his seed, whom is protected away in her shell. I hadn't told you once before, I proclaimed as I looked right into his eyes, I would die for that. Are you willing to die for this? I pointed to the other woman take, talking shh from her ride. There was a rage so deep within me that I didn't even realize the threats he threw towards me as I jumped out of my ride. As I began to walk around my car toward him, my car began to roll. You better go get your car, he taunted, but I kept toward him in my stroll. If you, want, if you value your life, you'd stay away from her, I say. For if you ever put your hands on her again, that would be your last day. You see that rolling car I left in drive just gets me around. But her and her siblings is what I live for and keeps me above ground. I get back in my car and drive around the block to park. As she confides in 911, 
the ordeal she went through with a weeping heart. They dispatch a car, an officer not so friendly begins to speak. Why she call you instead of us or the ambulance emergency? Well, perhaps because she looks at me as her protector, I said. Someone she knows would come to her rescue when in need, I pled. Well, how old is she? He taunted my way. 21, four months pregnant by the 33-year-old assaulter whose baby this is, I did relay. Step out of the car, the pig demands. I start to get out, as my baby did too, as to me he holds out his hand. Not you, mom, just her. She's an adult, you see. He snidely replies as he looks at me. I look into his eyes and see an even deeper and darker shade than the bum-ass ninja I just left, and for this he gets paid? My child begins to tell him as calmly as she could what had transpired whilst out in the cold she stood. I inform her to keep speaking as she steps to the side and asks officer not so friendly if she can at least sit in his ride. Whilst he interrogates her and try to lowly speak his vulgar words, not realizing that all of his ugliness I had already heard. He then informs my C to meet him at the corner's end. I tell her to get the badge number of the officer who was not a friend. I asked if she wanted me to stand out there with her. I asked if she wanted me to stand with her out there, excuse me. She said she did and would rather that I get the numbers from the officer's pair. I get out, walk up, and ask if I can get his badge and number and name. He commands me to go back to my car like I know the rules to the game. Your number and your name, would you give it to me, please, sir? And besides, if I stand here or not, it's really up to her. He turns to my daughter, then he threatens to leave because of me and my approach and the rights I know and believe. Had a four month pregnant assorted young lady standing out in the cold in the wee hours of the night filling out the police report and that just took my rage, my rage to another height. I get us back home and as I began to undress for my waiting bath of bubbles, I realized the rage in me and also that I was in deep trouble. I realized that in my few times of real need, that there I stand alone. The tears started to flow, and out came the wailing and the groans. I got a chance to take a glance, a quick glance, and for a moment look deep into my eyes. I was looking into the deepest and darkest shade of darkness of the three is what I realized one whom has no control nor care over what she does or say when it comes to her children, she throw her life, freedom, and even salvation away. Shaking my head as I look back at the threat of my seed and hers before my eyes dangle, I realized that last night within me in my deep darkness, I'd met an angel. Yep, as I look back over what happened and try to fill that space, I realize I look three shades of dark angels right in their face. And I pinned this one under Miss Sheila. This is one of my old pieces. So I um, have that one pinned, and um, I don't see any questions. <laughs> so I can um, speak on that one. I, um, yeah, so like I was saying, um, this was actually depicted from a real life experience and um, some of the things that I felt as um, 
this whole ordeal, if you will, transpired. Um, and when I got home and I went through that ordeal of looking at myself, because sometimes like when I get in that, that space, if you will, it's hard to pull me out. Actually, I saw some type of flash of light and that's what kind of snapped me. Otherwise, I might not have come out of it at that moment when I was speaking with the, um, the gentleman, if you will. Um, so I, I just released what I was feeling with my pen in regards to the angel that we um, discussed that we were going to pin around, if you will, in the group. So that's the first piece that I would share. And um, I'm going to read the, the piece that I said that I would read in regards to the young lady that was going through a bit of turmoil in her life. And she was speaking as she felt like giving up and it was um, no hope. So they say like is what you make it. That's not diamonds and pearls, pride, naysayers. It's called The Pains of Life. Um, the pains of life, my dear, we each go through in our fair share, so please don't fear. To pour your heart out through lips or fingertips, as in ears, through eyes, or on paper, the cries of from your heart do drop. The first step in redirection and healing is to be self-aware acknowledging your shortcomings and downfalls, and besides, why care? Who thinks and says what? Is that going to make your reality change? People are going to always think and talk on many levels, and opinions will range. Whether you do this or whether you live like that, it doesn't make a difference when it comes to those who like to chit-chat. So talk it so chalk up, yo, it is what it is, and mold it into what you'd like it to be. And whilst in the midst of becoming whole and letting go, press towards the mark till you claim your victory. So I do also a lot of inspirational writings. Um, I call them my little daily words. I um, stopped them a little while ago. I'm thinking about picking them back up, and sometimes I will um, share them here and there. Um, from my archives, if you will. So I, I like to encourage people to don't give up. I share a lot of my testimonies um, because been there, done that type of thing. When, when someone can relate to you and your struggle, it helps their hold on mean a little bit more to you. Um, where does the majority, this, this question is from Miss Loney. Um, where does the majority of your poetry comes from? Is it circumstances of the other people's lives or from your personal triumphs and trials? The majority of my, my poetry comes from my personal experience. My personal experience. Sometimes I may um, get and in, in respond to something that someone else is going through to um, encourage them. Most of the time it's not going to be in a form of a pinning or poetry, if you will. Um, it will be in you know, from my heart and an inspirational aspect from in words, if you will. Sometimes I might do an poem. The, the young lady that I did that piece for in response to that, she was a poet herself. So a portress, if you will. So that's why I responded to her in that manner. It's something that she could relate. I like to relate to people, not to just say this is this and that is that and don't have any like connection of experience, if you will. So um, that was what that one was. But most of my, the majority of my poetry comes from experience. And sometimes I might throw a little bit of um, fantasy in there, especially if I'm in that mood where I'm a little bit more sensual. Sometimes I can write sensual stuff, you know, sometimes I get in that mood. And usually that's a bit of fantasy. Um... I have this piece called Diamonds and Pearls. Diamonds and Pearls. What worth does diamonds and pearls hold when truth be told has gotten old? 
when seemingly the masses are walking around with half empty glasses stuck on self with heads up there. <clears throat> Wait, just one cotton picking minute before I go there. Let me turn around and spin it because nothing's living if life ain't in it. Now, I've had diamonds, pearls, and things of that sort, but none of those things remain for that was settled in court. My return reward, if you may, for holding down his fork. Thought he could buy my love and affection. Live to put up a front in the watch's directions, disregarding that our union needed protection. From him, from them, but mostly from him. Cause he ripped and tore to pieces each and every single limb. Mm, shaking my head. <laughs> Cause it still doesn't click. Even though he's tried, even though he's tricked every try and tried every trick. The towel got thrown cause I was tired and I was sick. I gave him chance after chance to tune in and dance. But all he done was pull down his pants, showed his natural black behind realizing too late that he had a gold mine, someone of real worth that in these times are hard to find. It's gonna take more than some green, more than some things. It takes someone who means what they say and says what they mean so that you won't have to second guess, so that your mind could stay at rest and focus could be on what's gonna deliver you all's best. Yeah, <laughs> diamonds and pearls are nice to view, but they don't show the real value of you, nor do they honor what's pure and what's true. So if I had a choice in possessions in this world, I choose love, respect, and honesty in a twirl and throw to the heathens those diamonds and pearls. For what worth do diamonds and pearls hold when truth be told has gotten old. And this is from June of 2013, one of my pieces. Um, I have a question that says, how often do I compose verses? Um, I was just speaking about this earlier to my pastor when I shared my latest piece that I wrote with her, not wrote with her. I shared the latest piece that I wrote I shared it with her. Um, sometimes I can do several in a day, and sometimes it may be months before I do anything. So it's just when I'm inspired. What I will say, that last piece that I wrote about diamonds and pearls was in sense of my ex-husband, um, whom I was with for 17 years. And for those 17 years, I wish I would have had that shared that one. Um, in those 17 years, I didn't write anything. One piece that I wrote maybe the first year into our relationship when we were um, actually getting ready to break up. And I was speaking with a friend of mine in regards to writing and I had shared with them that I wrote for so long, but I hadn't written anything since I had been with my now ex-husband because I didn't have any motivation. It was like, not the motivation, it was no inspiration there. And I wrote a piece and I'm trying to think of what the name of it was. I just remember saying it was like my ink had dried. It was called When Poetry Wins, When Poetry Wins. My ink had dried up. It had, the, it's like it had a tourniquet on it. But um, yeah, I, it, it just depends on my mood and how freely I'm blowing and filling uh, if my mind is at ease. I have this lake in the midst of my um, community, the community that I live in, and it's very serene. I love water. It's, water is so peaceful to me, so I will go out there sometimes, and I'll read, and sometimes I might write a few um, words, if you will, and sometimes I may feel more into a writing mood when I get home. But it just depends. Um, 
and what's going on in my life and where my mind is and if I'm at liberty to flow. I, I do well when I'm asked on a spot like to write something about this, that, or the other. So, okay. Um, I have another piece uh, that says, which one do I want to, around about love. Um, Empress Love, I am the Empress of Love. I am Empress Love. I love love. I love love. So I write a lot about it, even um, in my inspirational uh, pennings, if you will, or writings, daily words. You'll feel the love in it. I um, love people. And I just love the essence of love, if you will. This is around about love. And it's um, speaking in regards to the world that a lot of folk are experiencing today and mislabeling it as love, if you will, and how it's a vicious circle. Um, this piece was put together in April of 2013. I have a lot of pieces from 2013, I see. It's called Around About Love. And Around About, you know, if you go, some areas have these roundabouts where you have to take a turn and you kind of, if you're not paying attention, you get kind of caught up in that roundabout, like, where am I going? So this is called Around About Love. I love you stated is often deflated by intentions unmatched to words it elated. Playing with a heart that you knew from the start that in your future it would have never be a part. Stringing along with words of a song used to lure them down a path that's wrong. Deception at its best by a callous hearted guest using up space within a foolish heart's nest. Although once was plenty, they've reached one time too many. Now their once pure heart has now become dinty, battered, bruised, scarred, hurt, and used. Now they are caught up in the cycle and confused. Wanting to even the score, looking for an open door, for a loving heart, but theirs now loves no more. So now they string along with words of a song. You're used to lure them down a path that's wrong. Plan with hearts, which they knew from the start, that in their future, they would be no part. Empty I love you's, they state, creates one whom becomes irate, and two gets caught up in this vicious circle. Can you relate? Around about love. That's that piece. Um, like I said, I was um, speaking of the reality of, of a lot of people who are looking for love and who have been um, hurt by a misrepresentation of love, if you will. And now they are, they've given up and they want to because they've been hurt and scorned and now they're bitter and they want to reach out. It's, it's that saying where hurt people hurt people. Um, so now they're hurt and they're looking for victims, if you will. A vicious circle around about love. Uh, okay. I have, um, I think five more pieces here. Uh, no questions. I'm um, here. Okay, um, this next piece is called If Only For One Day, My Pain. If only for a day, my pain could restrain the heavy burdens of others, taking on the endured heartache from deceiving lovers. Loss of a mother and a fallen once admired brother. Then might I be a bit more free and appreciating my all I received from he. 
Overstanding that as bad as it may seem, a nightmarish dream, countless others would love to trade places with me. If only for a day, my pain could remain to remind me of lessons learned, of my lessons learned, of why bridges were burned, for my lost ones I yearn, and how folk and relationships often takes a turn. Then might I know how to let go and release that which serves me good no more. Enlightened by the facts that seasons change as do acts, but time waits for no one, so on must go the show. If only for a day, my pain could contain an antidote named pain be gone. I'd bottle it and gift it to those pain prone to apply over their wrong, written them of all moans and groans. Then might I feel that I in even raw deals, yet taking away folks' ability to heal, mm. robbing them of destined lessons, disguised within a blessing, and the ability to decipher fake from real, mm. 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 if only for a day my pain could sustain me, if only but as a reminder to that pain helps shape you and can bring closer to he who is able to carry and see you through. Then might you pray and know that day that you need the Lord in all your ways, reminding you he's the savior and in him is great favor. So now that I think about it, if only for a day, my pain, I would ask for it to stay. If only for a day, my pain, what type of poetry gives you greatest joy? Um, that which spreads and speaks of love. I feel uh, joyful in regards to that. Do my children read my pieces? Um, I'm sure they may have read some of it, but it's not like when I pen, I share them with them because I put a lot of it on my uh, page. Not a lot of it, but some, some of my work is on my pages, so they'll be able to see it on there. They don't really discuss it. I have a, uh, my eldest daughter, she's 26, and she's a writer, and she doesn't share her work with me, and she never really has. Even she's been writing for a long time, when I say she was in preschool writing, she would prefer to sit in and write in preschool as opposed to go out and play with the other children. And she, she grew up like that, so a little bit withdrawn. Um, sometimes I love, I love to share that which I write, but when it's with someone like close, like I'm a cr critic, I'm very, very, very like a perfectionist and a critic within myself. People in my close circles, unless I'm writing it for them, I'm not going to openly share it. Like, here, read this. I don't do that. So um, I'm pretty sure that they've, they've read some of my stuff um, because it's on my pages. Um, as long as they're not reading any of my more central work. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, Miss <laughs> Loney. I don't have a problem with them reading my, my stuff. Like if they come across it, if they happen to come across it, the stuff that's a little bit more sensual. Yeah, I don't want them. They'd be like, did my mama write that? And then sometimes I write and I put like sexual in, in notations in it, but it's not really a sexual piece. You have to think deeply and, and feel what I'm writing to understand what it is that I'm saying. I like to play with my words like that. I was discussing that with my pastor earlier when I let her um, read the last piece that I had uh, penned. And she was like, as I'm reading this, I'm like seeing like different aspects. Like you could take this different ways. I say, yeah, I write like that a lot. So um, <laughs> I, I, I might want to paint a picture or toy with the, my audience, if you will, 
and um, put something out in there and throw them off a little, just to have them more engaged so that they can be, be more attentive to what it is that I'm saying. Uh, that's, that's my reason behind that. And it's, it's fun to me. Um, I also do have, do they have the gifts? So yeah, like I said, my eldest daughter, she's a writer. She's an editor. Um, she's the one that, that got that gift. She's, shucks. She, as a, a child, was better than I am now. So <laughs> she's, she's good. Um, at, I know after my divorce, the floodgates were open. Did you feel the same or did you have to work hard to get the words flowing again? Ha! <laughs> so you can relate. Okay, my, my divorce was, uh, I went to court June the 11th and that was my last court date. That also was my anniversary. <laughs> So, they, yeah, that also was my anniversary. The divorce wasn't finalized to July the 24th, which is my little brother's birthday. Um, in July, I was writing like I had never stopped. At the end of July, after that divorce was final, and I got it, it yes. I don't know what that man did to me for 17 years. I, didn't, I couldn't write anything, anything. And when I say my pen blows, it, it was like he had a tourniquet on my pen. And as soon as I got that release, it just flowed like it was never gone. Yep, just like that. So, um, yeah, so just like that, it was gone. Um, to compose a book of verses, actually, like I said, my eldest daughter, she writes and she's an editor. So I was going to put together two books. One was going to be with my pennings. And one was going to be with my little inspirational daily words. Um, and over the years, I had about um, five years worth of pennings. And I had about maybe three years worth of little daily words I was going to put into these books, have her to edit it. I had surgery on my neck and spine in December. So at the end of December, I was recovering in January at my brother's. And someone broke into my apartment while I was recovering. So they stole my laptop. My, I had like three laptops. They stole them and my computer and all of my work was on there. So the only stuff that I have now is stuff that I may have emailed to, you know, friends and family over the years. I have to start all over. So I do plan on, uh, my daily words are mostly on Facebook. So um, I can... Just I just have to take the time because that's kind of tedious to go back into the archives when it's not on this day, you know, that's easy that they started that now. So um, I'm going to go and pull up what I can. I, like I said, I just moved down to Florida. It's like so much has been going on, so much has been happening that uh, I need to, I, I still don't feel settled, if you will. So I need to get settled and then get into, um, that space and then I'm going to start working on that and put together, you know, what I have and add to it and things of that sort. Um, so I do plan on putting together two books, one with my little daily words and one with my paintings. I do have um, my late friend, author pal, author Andrew Carlisle, uh, was killed earlier this year. And I have a couple of, well, maybe three pieces, three of my paintings in one of his books that he dedicated to his fans a couple of years ago. So I have that published in there, but nothing of my own. I do plan on getting it out soon. Um, I had hoped once I finished uh, healing, I was going to, and I procrastinated a little bit, I was going to start getting the work over to my daughter so she could start editing it, and um, I can get the books out. So that is a plan in effect. It kind of got nipped in the bud a little bit, but it's not a destroyed, if you will. It will prevail. Ah, what a nice one to come behind that one. This one is, they say life is what you make it. What does your life say? This is from October of 2013. Life says, reverence me your blessing. 
for in your next moment is not a promise that I shall dwell there. Appreciate those in that which I allot you with the buffering that comes with to blot out of you that which means to stop you from reaching your peak in me or hindering you from seeking me and from full appreciation when you think of me. Life says, I am drawing you near to me for you, beloved, are dear to me. Let me dwell in you and cast out all fear you see. For I have come to give of my abundance to you, fulfilling all needs as I see you through. Every test, trial, heartache, and tribulation, just to name a few. Building your precious faith as I do what I do. For I am the life, everything and all, and would be that for you if only on my name you would call. For in me, you can stand strong and tall. Just recite my prayer as to your knees you fall. My Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread and forgive me my debts and trespasses as I forgive my debtors and those whom trespass against me. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and always. Amen. Life says, I knock at the door of your heart, you see, sent to you by the mighty he. Let me in that I might dwell with thee and be to you what you allow of me. Life is what you maketh. Be in tune mm. as he speak. I have another question from Miss Loney. <laughs> Like your daughter, did you start early with writing? If not, when and how? No, she started a lot earlier than I. Um, shut. She had. <laughs> she she was in this. She was one of those teachers' pets, so teachers flocked to her. They loved her because she was such a smart child. So when they saw how well she wrote, she wrote, she was in third grade. Mm -hmm. And they did this thing for families where the children put together these books. And they actually, they um, published the little books that these children put together. And on the family night, they had their published copies of these children's books. And it was inspired by her and her writing she was in third grade then. Like I said earlier, I started when I was about 10 years old. So I was like in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shucks. Um, I was in about the fifth grade when I started. She started almost out of the womb. <laughs> I was, she's, she's my oldest. And like I said, I'm a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. and, and I like to pull out the full potential if I know that you're capable, I mean, if you're an A student, don't bring me an A minus. I'm not going to appreciate it. But if you're a D student and you bring me a D, I'm going to know you did your best. If you bring me a D plus, I'm going to be astounded because you really applied yourself and you pushed past your potential. So in saying that, because I knew she was capable, I taught her to read mm -hmm. for, for, second, for her second birthday she got hooked on finance and what made, what had me to get that for her is she was one year old and my mother and I, we would be talking around her and we don't want her to hear what we're saying. She, we don't want her to know what we're talking about. So we would spell words out and she'd be like, I know what you said. I'm like, what I, what do we say? Cause I'm like, no, you don't. What do we say? You said this, that, that, this, that. And I'm like, little girl. So got her hooked on phonics. At two, 
years old, mm -hmm. she learned to read. Mm -hmm. And at two years old, she mm -hmm. read to learn. So by the time she got into preschool, she was already reading and writing. She was mm -hmm. already reading and writing. So she would stay in from recess and her teachers thought it was cute. And they probably should have made sure she went and inter intermingled with <laughs> The other children, because like I said, she's 26 years old now and she still has that mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I keep calling you Loni. Are you, am I, um, I'm not saying, is it Roni? Lon Lonnie. Lonnie. So I'm saying Lon Loni and it's Lonnie. My bad. My, <laughs> except my apology. <laughs> <laughs> Don't charge it to my heart, charge it to my mind. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we have that piece. Ah. I'm a prideful person. This next piece keeps coming up and I've been pushing it. Oh, come on. I, I, I didn't realize I had a, a, a problem with uh, pride until... Um, I went through this bad, uh, I don't even know what to call it, breakup or whatever, and I'm like, because of my pride, I, it, it just got distorted. Um, I'm gonna, before I start this, I'm going to answer this question. Okay, is it okay? Have you ever, okay, no, it's not a question. Have you ever collaborated with other poets? I do that often, that's fun to me. Um, Miss Loney, I don't know if you remember with, um, what's that gentleman's name? <sighs> Troy? I did some stuff with Troy. It's been a while with him. But with the, um, with Mr. Um, I'll think of his name. But we did this, this collaboration. It was very long. It was called Between Me and Thee. Yes. <laughs> that was like so fun. That was like I think I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, with I the think. daughters? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. With the yes. daughters? I know. That was like so fun. Yes. Um, when I did that with him, and it was like we were back and forth, and it's... He's an excellent uh, uh, writer. He is. Yes. He is. That was like beautiful. That was some of my... I, do, I think I do my best work collaborating or... Coming, feeding off of other people and exactly. bringing that in, I do well like that. And we were speaking about love and relationship, and mm -hmm. that's like one of my favorite topics. Mm -hmm. And I actually, people might have thought that we had something going on or that we had known each other. I had just met him in a group that day when we did that collaboration. Mm -hmm. And just connected. Just connected. Mm -hmm. Just connected. And it was, um, we became, you know, friends after that. Mm -hmm. We became friends after that, but I had just met him. Um, I also do a little collaboration. It's been a while with um, Mark, so mm -hmm. we do a little. Yeah, we do a little mm -hmm. fun work here and there. So it's been maybe about a month or two since we've done something. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of back and forth with him, but yeah, I do collaborative pieces. I love it. I love that. This is called Pride is a Cold Killer. <laughs> I'm a lioness, so they say <laughs> prideful, and I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. But I'm working on it. It gave me something to work on to uh, better myself, if you will. Pride is a cold killer. Pride, mine, clinging on to it for life lest I allow them to get away with the pain and strife they cause me. And for what? As a repayment to my heart? My all? That I so willingly gave them for them to hurt me with an unjust cause? No, they will pay for taking advantage of my kindness, assuming it had me weak. I'm going to break them down with just the mere words that I'm going to speak. They won't be lies. They will be all truths, no holds barred, truth be told, with intentions to pierce their heart, mind, and soul, full of ruthlessness. 
I gave them my best, the good part of me. But instead of embracing, they crapped on it. So now, the other side, I gladly let them see. Pridefully done. Their heart is stunned. Never thought I'd go there. But I've only just begun. You see, my pride won't be satisfied till they hurt as much inwardly as the pain they cause me inside. The only difference will be mine will be just. For this is their just desserts. Maybe they'll think twice before causing another undeserved hurt. This had been my self-righteousness stance till I blew my chance at true love, relationship, friendship from a misinterpreted glance. Didn't read his words correct, which triggered my pride effect and killed what we built with my harsh and stern dialect. Mm. 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 Pride, mine, clinging to it for life, cost me more than I was willing to pay and cut me like a knife. Wouldn't allow his words as I viewed to get away with the pain and strife I confused with what he calls my life. Mr. 215 said it best, pride is a cold killer and excuse and, and, and excuse for weak-minded. Don't let your pride cost you what's most valuable. Now, my case, I rest. Pride is a cold killer. So, I, um, that was in response to a heartbreak. So I can call it that. Mm -hmm. A heartbreak, I, I've only experienced a heartbreak like that one time in my life. I was at 40 years of age. I said, I don't know how people go through this, mm -hmm. like multiple times, because I don't ever want to feel this again. I never want to feel what it feels like to be heartbroken. Mm -hmm. That's such a terrible feeling. So um, I was heartbroken, and a lot of it was due to me reacting the, a misunderstanding, mm -hmm. not giving myself time enough to cool, cool down before I address things. Like uh -huh. I said, when uh -huh. I suffered, I'm exactly, when I feel attacked, when I feel attacked or disrespected mm -hmm. or bothered, either I'm going to brush it off. If you're somebody like on the outside, I'm going to laugh at you. You're going to humor me. But mm -hmm. if you're someone close to me or you're dealing with someone that's close to me, then I'm going to attack. Right. I'm going to attack. So um, after that ordeal, I realized I said, wow, I am prideful. I have an issue with pride. I have to work on that. That's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote that one in, in regards to that. Um, real life instances, if you will. Uh, the pains of life. I think I read that one. I pinned that one for a pal. This is the, uh, the last piece that I had as I was going to share, but I think I'm going to have enough time to share um, the last piece that I wrote after this, um, seeing that I have like 10 minutes left. So if I don't start talking um, in the midst of it, I didn't think that I would be able to pull this off, but I, I am. I talk about it. Doing very good. Doing <laughs> well, good. That's God. That's God. Naysayers. Naysayers. There is only one single that say nay. Although it may wear many a mask, changing faces to fit the circumstance. Like the mask it wore as it attempted to get my mother to snuff out my life from the womb. Or the one it wore as it attempted to use love to hook me addictively, barely leaving toddler stage. Or perhaps the mask it used to convince my parents that it was cool to let me know that my sperm donor rejected me. Oh. Or the worn mask that forcefully took away my innocence, my womanhood, at the tender age of 12. Or maybe the mask it wore to follow me around from my early teens till it implanted me with a seed to raise alone. What about the mask used to lure in my innocence to rob me of almost two decades of my life? 
trying to snuff away my life, bearing to demolish it all, bearing to demolish all I have ever believed, loved, and stood for, just because I said I do? All these masks worn in attempt to influence, to manipulate my loved, my love, to steal from me, to kill me, to destroy me, from the comfort of the womb and even through today, trying to rob me of my rights with the useless naysay, not realizing I have been peeped its game and every move that it plays. Now what is it to say no to what he has already predestined? All it did was give me countless lessons, making it through the many trials and tribulations and even testings, for ain't no devil in hell going to rob me of my blessings. Hello. For even when it tries to say nay, I am, at, I am still at rest. For which nay say can its moves sway when my God has given me his yes. Now on that note, I say peace and God bless. Naysayers. I so like. I um, went through that one <clears throat> and just gave a little synopsis of some of the things that I went through in life where the adversary, if you will, um, had a, an attempt to, to snuff my life out from the very beginning. Um, you know, even when my mother was impregnated with me, um, mm -hmm. considering abortion and bless God, I was born. Um, and I lived through some things. So that's just a, a little bit of what uh, I went through in life from the naysayer. Right. You're right. And still I'm here standing, okay. smiling. Smiling. So I have this one last piece that I'm going to share. It's a piece that I um, did, I think Wednesday, today is Saturday. So I did it on Wednesday. And um, it was in response to my sweetheart, someone who's dear to my heart, my sweetheart. And they were pouring something out in their heart. They're not really a poet, but sometimes they, they write and they share things that they're, um, that's on their heart. And at the end, they were pleading, saying um, if they could, uh, if someone could come and help them to breathe life back into them, to be there for them. So I wrote this piece and I call it, called it, um, Resuscitated. Okay. Yeah, resuscitated. Um, and I'm trying to pull it up now before I got five minutes. I didn't print this one out because I, I thought I would have. I thought I would not have even gotten to that one. So it's called resuscitated. Allow me to resuscitate you. To breathe this life with you as we journey down the path predestined. Lessened, yet elongated and hardship plated with trials bought by those whom played to care. How dare they take the love we gifted them just to be shifted by them and drifted out into the deep. Their loss, they were sleep on you, on me, on us, on we, but it brought our paths to cross and allowed us to see I and you and you and me. Can't even be mad at them. I mean, I'm glad that they led me to my him, my you, your me, our we. Allow me to kiss away the pain as I lick to heal the wounds to your heart, sucking away, sucking away the injected poisons from the very start of your hurt. I mean, I want them dead, buried in the dirt. Six phantoms asunder, as if they never were, as if they never even were, ghosts gone up under our feet. As we travel the path predestined us and breathe this life together, resuscitated. 
I want to thank you. <laughs> thank you dearly. Thank you so much, um, everybody that came aboard and um, supported me on my very first showcase. I'm greatly appreciative. Um, you made it a success for me. Thank you so dearly. Um, the next, uh, this showcase will be on another Saturday Night Poet, wordpress.com, uh, on www dot another saturday night poet dot wordpress dot com um so you get a chance to view that and i'm thinking that it should be able to be shared for those who may not have gotten a chance to come and share in with us tonight um so thank you so dearly for making this a success for me i greatly appreciate you for it enjoy the rest of your evening thank you poet Ocean Crest, the fair poet, thank you so very much for this opportunity and um, your patience in uh, diagnosing our problem and, and making sure that this was a smooth night for us. I thank you greatly from the depths of my heart. Thank you, Miss Lonnie. Yes. <laughs> Lonnie. Yes. God bless you both. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.